So in the previous Jeep build video, I finished making the basic foundation of my amplifier rack beauty panel. Now at that point, the beauty panel was looking relatively plain, so I wanted to do a couple of things in order to spice it up. One of the first things I wanted to do was add some shape. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a bunch of advanced router vent techniques that you can use in order to do so. I'm also gonna show you how I created these acrylic trim rings that mount underneath the beauty panel and help to highlight the amplifiers and processor. As part of that process, I'm also gonna show you how I mounted the LED strand to part of the beauty panel in order to edge lift these pieces of acrylic. Let's do this thing. Hey guys, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install your dream car audio system. On this channel, I do reviews, I do tutorials and lessons, and I also do build log videos just like this one. So if you're new here, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Let's start building. In the last video, we left off at this step here. So let's remove the beauty panel and start adding some shape. Now you may also remember this shape here that I used in order to create the different viewing holes in the top of the amplifier beauty panel. I'm going to start with applying one of my favorite things in the world, I know you guys love it when I say it, some template tape. The template tape allows me to stick the piece that I had created before to a new piece of half inch MDF. With this half inch MDF I'm going to be creating the different shapes that I'm ultimately going to be copying to pieces of acrylic that I'll be able to use to light up behind the amplifier rack. Here I am drilling my wood in order to have a nice hole for the shaft so that I can insert the router bit. I fire up the router and then I start making my cutting pass. And what's important here is I want to make sure that I have constant pressure of the top workpiece against the bearing because I want to save the inside piece for later. That piece will come in handy when it comes time to make something like a pressed grill, which I'll be showing in a future video. I continue this process until all three of the hole cutouts are made. Now it's time to bust out this big old bad boy of a router bit that's from my show sponsor, Mobile Solutions, and it's part of their smart pattern system. As always, my dudes, all of the different tools and materials that I use in these videos are available in a link down in the video description. Now what I'm doing here is I've raised up the router bit about a quarter inch out of the router table, and I'm making a cutting pass. And what this does is it creates this step. By creating this step, I can do much like I did at the beginning of this video and drill another hole, insert my spiral flush trim bit, and once again make a cutting pass. Now by doing these steps, you can see that I've created a new template shape that I'm going to be able to use to make the acrylic pieces. Doing these steps is really an awesome way to create custom geometry that you can use throughout a build. And just in case you were wondering, whenever we do this technique, we'll always end up with a little nib just like this on the piece. So what we do is just easily sand it away. So here we have our three new shapes that we've created. Now before I cut the acrylic, I do wanna copy these shapes to another half inch piece of MDF because I'm gonna be using that to to add some more depth to the actual hole cutouts on the beauty panel. I'd rather just copy these now and get that step out of the way because cutting acrylic can be kind of sketchy, so I'd rather have a nice thick template to do it with rather than the thinner one that I had before. Now that I've created these thick pieces of medium density fiberboard, I'm going to go ahead and transfer their profile to pieces of acrylic. Here's a cool trick that I like to do and it's probably a nice cheap tool that you already own. It's called the washer trick. I actually plan on reducing the whole size of the acrylic on these different shapes so that you can actually see the edge of the acrylic more. So since I need to save some more material on the inside before rough cutting, I'll use a washer in order to compensate for that extra material. Now I can use a jigsaw with a special acrylic cutting blade in order to cut the material. And again, I can't stress this enough guys, make sure you have the right jigsaw blade. It makes a huge difference. With my acrylic rough cut, I'm applying template tape once again to my template, but you guys, it's important to note here that I'm using as wide of template tape as I possibly can. I do not want this template to shift while I'm routing. I don't want it to shift because I don't want to ruin my workpiece and also because it's extremely dangerous. So in order to keep things even a little bit more safe, I'm going to be using a router shield. Now the reason I'm taking all these additional precautions is when a router bit grabs on a material like acrylic, it is not forgiving. It will rip your hand directly into the bit. 
Using the shield also gives me an additional layer of control, which is nice because then I'll have a really nice perfect finish. Now I cut the outside perimeter flush, but on the inside perimeter, I'm going to be using this flush trim bit with an offset bearing. This allows me to create the reduced hole size that I mentioned earlier when I was talking about using the washer trick for the offset. Today's forecast and 100% chance of some acrylic snow. So there we have it, our acrylic piece is completely cut out. After I detach the pieces of wood from the acrylic, I'm going to attach them to the back side of the original cover plate. I then load this 22 and a half degree chamfer bit into my router. Making a router pass with this particular router bit that has such an aggressive angle adds a ton of depth to the panel. This is exactly the design I was going for because I feel like it replicates the design DNA that the Jeep embodies. Now I was going to leave this large area alone and just do some minor design details, but I feel like it's the perfect area to do a backlit logo. So after sketching out my rough design, I bust out the jigsaw once again in rough cut. I then attach some templates using template tape, and then it's over to the router where I use a flush trim bit to copy the shape. I follow up with adding the same 22 and a half degree chamfer to this hole as well. Now eventually the plan is to wrap this amplifier rack with a layer of upholstery vinyl. I want to make sure that I have a nice location for it to wrap around to the back side of my pieces so I'm using a rabbiting bit in order to make a cutting pass around the inside of each of these shapes. That gives us the stepped profile around the inside of each that you can see here. Now do you guys remember this scrap piece of wood that I had that I made earlier that was the waste piece from creating these shapes? I'm going to be using it for something really important and this is the reason that you don't want to throw away any of the extra pieces you make while you're working on a project. Once I put a piece of acrylic in place it becomes clear what this piece will come in handy for. You can see that I have an LED strand here and what it will do is allow me to have a channel that I can actually stick the adhesive LED strip to. Next I temporarily mocked up the LED strips within the amp rack just so that we could get an idea of what it's going to look like. I also put together the layout of my sponsor panel that will also be backlit. So now that the beauty panel is completely shaped and I've added some intricate details, in the next video we're going to be doing some final assembly and I'm also going to be adding some body filler to some different spots to kind of make everything nice and smooth and mesh the different surfaces into one another. If you enjoyed this video, I do put a lot of time into editing these different video clips and doing a voiceover and stitching everything together. So if you found value in this video and could take a quick second to hit that like button, I'd really appreciate it. Big thank Thank you to all you subscribers out there. Thank you for watching these videos. And if you are new here and you would like to see the rest of this build log series, be sure to check it out here on screen. A special thanks goes out to Jose, Brian, Ali, Corey, EJ, Emmanuel, Rory, Truman, and Jerry, along with the rest of the Patreon support team. Thank you guys for making contributions to help support this video content. More videos coming soon. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it.